I've had this Olivetti Multisuma 20 in the to-do pile for a couple of years now, just sitting there waiting to be fixed, and I finally got round to working on it a couple of weeks ago. It is, of course, a listing adding machine, with the bonus feature of having automatic multiplication. The machine was made in Italy, probably in the early 1970s. It has the decimal currency rather than the old pounds, shillings and pence, so it's likely to have been made around, or after, 1971, when the UK changed to decimal currency and it may well only have been in use for a short time before electronic calculators took over, although I think some of the printing mechanical adding machines like this battled on for a few years after the changeover to electronics. Olivetti were known for designing beautiful looking machines, and this one, like the Prima 20 I looked at before, has a strong angular design which would have looked quite stunning adorning your desk in the 60s or 70s. I'll save looking at the inside of the machine and talking about some of the stuff I had to do to fix it for another video. I'll put a link to that one in the description once I've filmed it. So for now we'll take a look at how it works. The printout is a little bit faint on this machine. There'll be a number of reasons for this. The platen roller will have become a bit hard over the years, so it's less compliant when the number wheels strike and the springs that fire the number wheels into the platen roller will also have lost a little bit of tension. But most of all, these machines are supposed to use a heavy ink ribbon, whereas the only thing you seem to be able to get these days are fairly generic nylon typewriter ribbons. Typewriter hammers strike with much greater force than mechanical adding machines, so they generally didn't need such a heavily inked ribbon. Anyway, as with most adding machines, you don't use it like a normal calculator. On a normal calculator, if you wanted to add 2 plus 1, you'd enter 2 plus 1 and equals to reveal the answer of 3. But if I do the same thing on the adding machine, and the plus key is this big rectangular key, with the subtotal or total key taking the place of the equals key. You can ignore the equals key over here, that's just for the multiplier. So I'll enter 2 plus 1 and press the total key, and I'm left with the answer of 2, which might not be what you'd expect. To use an adding machine you have to add each number into the register or accumulator before pressing the total key. So if I press 2 plus and 1 plus, that has added both numbers into the register, and I can display the total by pressing the subtotal or total key and we now have the correct answer of 3. The difference between the subtotal and total key is that whatever number is held in the register remains in the register when you use the subtotal, whereas when you use the total key it prints the number held in the register and clears it back to 0. So, if I enter 123 plus 456 plus 789 plus and press the subtotal, I get the answer of 1368, with a diamond next to it to show that it's a subtotal. If I then carry on and add 987 plus 654 plus 321 plus, and again press the subtotal, we get the answer of 3330, which is of course those two sums added together. I can press the subtotal as many times as I like, and the total still stays there. But if I now press the total key, it prints the total with an asterisk next to it, and if I press again, I just get zero because the register has been reset to zero. Subtraction is equally simple. If I enter 10,000 and press the plus key to add it to the register, then enter 9,999 and press the minus key, it prints the 9,999 with a minus next to it, and now if I press the subtotal we should be left with 1. Thusly. This machine has the point to separate the pounds from the pence, but if you're working with numbers other than currency, you can just ignore that point. The Olivetti machines have another neat trick. If I now subtract 2 from the total left in the register, a little flag will appear in the window up here to show we've gone into a negative result. Like that. And if I print the total, it displays a minus next to the answer. Talking about the window at the top, there's an indicator to show how many digits you've entered into the keyboard, up to a maximum of 9. 
and as soon as you add that into the register, the keyboard is cleared again. If you know you've made a mistake as you enter a number, you can clear it using the clear button here. If you try to enter more than 9 digits, it will print a letter E for error next to the number you've entered, so you know to clear the machine and start again. The WN, or whole number key, allows you to work without the two zeros after the decimal point. So if I enter 123 and press the whole number key and the plus key, and 456 and again press the whole number key before adding it to the register, you'll see that both numbers are printed without the zeros. However, when I press the total key, it still prints the zeros, making it maybe a little bit pointless. We've got a double zero key, which just enters a double zero to save you some keystrokes. Some machines in other countries had a triple zero key over here, but this UK version has a half pence key. So if I add 12 and a half pence, and 29 and a half pence, it will print the half, then if I press total, we're given the answer of 42. Finally, there's a repeat lever here. This stops the keyboard clearing after each addition. On the more basic machines, this would be how you did multiplication. But as this version has automatic multiplication, it would just be used to enter the same number several times. So, if I enter 159 and move the repeat lever down, I can press the plus button several times without it clearing the keyboard. I can print a subtotal at any time, and add more of the same number. But as soon as I press the total key, the repeat lever is reset to its upper position. The same happens if I press the clear button, the repeat lever returns to its normal position. One final thing before we look at the multiplier. If I'm working on a big set of accounts and want to enter a reference number that won't be added to the register, I can type in my reference, say 1234, and pull this lever at the back of the machine, and my reference number will be printed with a sideways chevron next to it, but this will have no effect on the total in the register, which should be 3330. And indeed it is. So now for the multiplier. This works exactly as you might expect. If I enter 7 and press the multiply button, it will print 7 with an X by it. Then enter 8 and press the equals button. It will print the 8 with an equals next to it, and then add the 8 7 times to display the result of 56. The first number you enter will determine how many times the second number is added into the register. So if I want to multiply 23456 by 42, I could enter 23456 and press the multiply key, and then enter 42 and press the equals, giving the answer of 985152. But that took quite a long time. If I do it the other way round, and enter 42 and press the multiply key, and then enter 23456 and press equals, we get the same answer in a fraction of the time. By default, the result of a multiplication is printed as a total, and the register is cleared. But if I engage this lever marked with the letter A, any multiplications I do will be added to the register, and not printed. So, if I enter 12 times 45 and press equals, it just shows the two numbers I've multiplied, but not the result. I can then do another multiplication, say 4 times 361, and press equals. Again, it shows what numbers I've multiplied, but not the result. But pressing either the subtotal or total key will display the result of 1984. Last but not least, if I want to subtract the result of a multiplication from an amount already held in the register, I can use this red button along with the equals key. So, if I enter 5000 and press plus to add that into the register, then enter 797 times 4 and hold down the red button before pressing the equals, it will show that it's a negative multiplication by printing a minus next to the 4 and equals, and we're left with the answer of 1812. And just for one final party trick, it is possible to do division on this machine, 
albeit by a rather rough and ready method. So we'll do the usual approximation of pi by dividing 355 by 113. To get a reasonable amount of decimal places, I'll fill the register with zeros after each number. So that's 355 and 6 zeros, and press the plus to add that into the register. Then 113, followed by 6 zeros, and not forgetting to push down the repeat lever, I can now start subtracting, until I see the negative flag appear. So, once, twice, three times, four times, and the flag has appeared. I'll now move the repeat lever up so the keyboard is cleared on the next operation, and press the plus key to add the last 113 back in and clear the negative flag. Now I enter 113 with five zeros. Move the repeat lever down, and subtract once, twice, and the flag has appeared, so I move the repeat lever up and press the plus key to clear the white flag. Then enter 113 with four zeros, engage the repeat lever, and press the minus until the white flag appears again. Release the repeat lever and press the plus key. Then enter 113 with three zeros, engage the repeat lever, and press the minus until the flag appears again. Release the repeat lever and press the plus key. Then enter 113 with two zeros, engage the repeat lever, and continue pressing the minus key until the flag appears. Release the repeat key and press the plus again. Next, enter 113 with one zero, engage the repeat lever, and carry on pressing the minus key until the white flag appears. It'll be a few more presses this time round. Then release the repeat key and press the plus key. And finally, enter 113 with no zeros. Engage the repeat lever and press the minus until you see the white flag appear. Release the repeat key and press the plus key. And just in case you think your work is now over, there's still a little bit to do. So, if you tear off the printer paper and examine it, you'll see the 355 with the six zeros that we added at the start and a minus sign next to every subtraction that we've done. The last subtraction in each set being the one that gave a negative result, so you can ignore that last minus. So at the top here, we have four minuses, ignore the last one, so that's three. And we know that something around 100 will go into something around 300 about three times, so the decimal point must go here. Then we move on down to the next set of minuses. There are only two, so we ignore the second one and write a number one. Then we move on to the next set, ignore the last minus, so that will be four, and carry on with this process all the way down the sheet, and you should be left with the answer of 3.141592, which is, of course, an approximation of pi. OK, that's probably going a bit too far, but it's kind of fun in a geeky sort of way. And thanks to Niccolo Giretto for telling me about this method of division on the Olivetti. I'll put a link to one of his videos down in the description. I think that will do for now. Thank you so much if you've made it this far. I'll shoot another video soon where we'll look at the mechanism inside and some of the many seized parts I had to free up to get it running. You can also see the pair of videos I did a couple of years ago looking at one of the hand-cranked Olivetti adding machines. I'll put a link on screen about now, and also down in the description. That's it for now. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video, and maybe even subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.